So good afternoon guys, our topic for today is about biodiversity and the healthy society. First, let us define biodiversity. Biodiversity is defined as the variety of life present in an ecosystem. Biodiversity is important in how society benefits from it. So to simply define biodiversity, it is all the different kinds of life you'll find in one area. Okay? So there are three different types of biodiversity. First is genetic, second is specific diversity, and third is ecological diversity. Okay? Genetic biodiversity refers to the variation among organisms of the same species. This variation are usually passed down from parents to offspring. So when you say genetic biodiversity, we are referring to the different variation among organisms of the same species. A perfect example of this are those rats. Okay, You can see different variation of rats. There are white, there are brown, there are black. They are big, they are small, and there are spotted ones. In a species of rats, you can see different variation of it. So that is a perfect example of it. Another is chickens. The better there is a chicken that we call sasu, the ones that are kalbo sa leeg. They don't have feathers around their neck. And we also have black chicken. The chickens that are used in creating Chinese chicken soup, okay? And there are also chickens na panglaban, as you define it, panderby. Those are the Texas chickens. So, there are a lot of variation in the same species. So, that is genetic biodiversity. Okay, now, species diversity. It is influenced by the environmental condition in the region. Species are the normal measure of biodiversity for these are the basic units of biological classification. Species are grouped together in families based on shared characteristics. When you say species kasi, it is a group of living organisms consisting of similar individuals capable of exchanging genes. Okay? That is called interbreeding. So, the species is the principal natural taxonomy unit. So, that ranks below a genus and denoted by a Latin binomial. Uh, for example, Homo sapiens. That is a Latin binomial. Okay? So, if you define a species in a simpler words, okay, a species is often uh, defined as a group of organisms. A group of organisms that can reproduce naturally with one another and create fertile offspring. So when you say as a group of organisms that can reproduce naturally, that means, for example, yung aso, they can only produce an offspring if they mate with the same species. Okay? Dogs to dogs. But if they mate with a cat, dog to cats, that cannot be, diba? So they cannot reproduce an offspring. So, they are in different species. Okay, gets? Now, ecological diversity. Okay? That refers to the network of different species in an ecosystem. And the interaction of these species, the variation of climatic and altitudinal conditions along with varied ecological habitats are the reason for the richness in biodiversity of a particular region on Earth. Biodiversity in ecological systems provides functioning ecosystems that supply oxygen, clean air and water, pollination of plants, pest control, wastewater treatment, and many ecosystem services. So, if you have a rich ecosystem, you have a rich biodiversity of species. So, basically, our ecological system boosts ecosystem productivity where each species no matter how small all have an important role to play for example a larger number of plant species means a greater variety of crops greater species diversity ensures natural sustainability for all life forms so if you have a rich habitat you have a wide variety of plant species 
that means there are a lot of creatures or animals that live within that area because their foods are being supplied. Okay? Let's connect humans and biodiversity. They are co-benefactors. Okay, society benefits greatly from the richness of biodiversity since humans can source from natural biological resources such as food, medicine, energy, and more. Biodiversity in natural ecosystem can also regulate climate, food, pollination, water, and air quality, water storage, decomposition of waste, among many others. Okay, however... This numerous benefit of biodiversity are vulnerable to exploitation. Humans need to be responsible in optimizing the benefits of biodiversity through the proper utilization of science and technology. So, can natural resources be exploited? Okay, you see guys, since the beginning of life, humans have exploited natural resources for the materials required to sustain life. That primarily includes food production and economic sustenance. Although other substances are also extracted from the natural environment, some of it are being exploited. Okay? Even the discovery of the effects of marijuana, okay, that was supposed to be a medicinal plant, now it is being abused. Okay? So there are exploitation of our natural resources another is the species that are endangered okay we can't sustain the number of those endangered species because of exploitation okay yun sana ng normal habitat nakukulangan because of exploitation the balance within that ecosystem is being compromised okay so the exploitation of natural resources is the use of natural resources for economic growth, okay? Uh, just like yung kaingin and the, the illegal logging, okay? For the illegal loggers, okay? The, they exploited a lot of trees, okay? Imagine, a tree can grow for several years. Hindi lang several, for many years, okay? And then you just cut a tree down for a few minutes. Imagine how long it takes for that tree to grow. And then you just cut it off for just a few minutes. Okay? So, how can we replenish earth if we cut trees and we don't replace them immediately? Imagine a tree took so many years to grow. Okay? So, if you cut a lot of trees, you have to wait for how many years for that trees to be replenished okay so that's one thing what so that's how exploitation works okay so if you are going to think about it what are the natural resources being exploited okay the most exploited natural resources in the world is fossil fuels okay since the start of 2015 the world has harvested more than 99 billion barrels of oil nearly 25 billion tons of coal and more than 10.6 trillion cubic meters of natural gas imagine that so fossil fuels also just like the trees took so much years to be developed imagine that okay kung matagal na yung puno mas matagal na naman yung fossil fuels imagine okay so now let's talk about health and medicine Ancient medicine, we used herbal medicines. Since 2600 BC or before Christ, people have been using plants to treat illness. Hence, the practice of herbal medicine. Uh, an, an example of that is the Cupressus sempervirens okay? or the Cypress. And Comifora mira or the Myrrh. For instance, have been used to treat coughs, colds, and inflammation since the ancient times. Herbal medicines were also used in healing rituals and in the treatment of injuries resulting from wars or accidents. Various plant-based drugs such as gargles, pills, infusions, and ointments were used in ancient Egypt as well as in ancient China. Okay, if you're going to trace the year that the herbal medicines are used, we are going to go back. To the times before Christ, even 2,600 before Christ, 
it is being widely used na. So, herbal medicines are the first medicinal aid people use to cure illnesses. Or, let's say, to relieve illnesses or the symptoms of certain illnesses. From the beginning of 100 BC to 300 BC, the Greeks recorded the collection storage and use of medicinal. During the Dark and Middle Ages, monasteries in England, Ireland, France, and Germany preserved the Western knowledge of treating illness using herbal medicine. Even in the Middle Ages and in Dark and Middle Ages, we are using these herbal medicines to cure illnesses. As such, the use of herbal medicines in ancient civilization was dependent on the biodiversity present in their respective environment. For example, Salvia apiana, or that is California sage, was an herbal plant used by Indian tribes of Southern California to aid in childbirth and was believed to protect the immune system of respiratory ailments. Okay, we also have that kind of California sage here in the Philippines. And I, as, I, as far as I can remember, they are very aromatic. And they are used now in childbirth. Okay, kung dito sa atin, we use um, guava leaves in cleaning wounds such as childbirth or circumcisions. During the ancient times or the ancient civilization, they use salvia apiana or the California sage. So, another example is the alhagi marorum or the camel thorn that secretes a sweet and gummy substance from its stem and leaves called mana during hot days. Mana from the camel thorn contains melazitos and sucrose, an invert sugar. It is believed to have diuretic, diaphoretic, laxative, expectorant, gastroprotective, antiseptic, and anti-diarrhea properties. Israelis were known to use roots of the plant to treat diarrhea. Okay, this is usually used naman in loose bowel movements. Okay? The Kankani people smoked the plant to treat asthma and Romans used the plant to treat nasal polyps. The plant Linguisticum Scoticum or Scottish Lovage is believed to treat hysterical and uterine disorder. Its seeds are used to relieve flatulence and or stimulate the senses. Many medicinal products available in the market today are derived from natural substances from plants such as salicylic acid, the active ingredient of the anti-inflammatory drug aspirin, for example, is derived from the bark of a willow tree. So that willow tree secretes this substance that is used to create aspirin, an anti-inflammatory drug. Okay? So um, even nowadays, these medicines, these herbal medicines are still widely used. Okay? So, morphine, one of the most widely known painkillers, which was first marketed and used in the 1800s, is derived from papaver somniferum, commonly known as opium poppy. So, imagine morphine is formulated from a plant. Okay? That is opium poppy. So, as you can see in the picture, that is opium poppy. And the sap from its fruit, is the one that is used to create morphine. Okay? Digitoxin or digitoxin used in the management of congestive heart failure is derived from digitalis purpurea or foxglove, which has already been used to treat heart conditions since the 1700s. The transmission of disease due to the movement of organisms amplified the need to study the environment in relation to human health. As time went by, information regarding different diseases and how to treat them has been extensively documented to come up with more effective ways of treating them. So for a very long time, medicinal plants are considered as rich resources of ingredients which can be used in drug development of natural and synthetic drugs. Okay? More affordable than conventional medicine kasi ang herbal medicine if you look at it economically. Okay? So, it is easier to obtain than prescription medicine, of course, because it is provided by the nature. And um, it gives us natural healing and um, natural strength in our immune system. Even nowadays, plant-based traditional medicines are still prevalent because plants are often inexpensive to prepare. 
and they are effective and their use for curing common ailments results in minimal complications. Imagine the medicines that are provided by our nature is cost effective and is completely free. Okay, the discovery of medicine penicillin underwent its first clinical trials in 1938 and the first indication of antibiotic resistance to penicillin was reported in 1941. New antibiotics from microorganisms and bioactive natural products continued to be discovered. In the 1900s, the production of bacterial strains super sensitive to beta-lactams test for inhabitations of beta-lactamases and specificity of sulfur-containing metabolites led to the discovery of novel antibiotic structural classes. For example, those are nocardicines, carbapenems, and monobactams. Okay. Fungi and microorganisms found in trees, grasses, algae, and herbaceous plants and living in the intracellular species of plant stems, petioles, root, and leaves have been widely used in the production of many important medicinal products today. So, for example, that penicillin came from a penicillium mold. Okay? Scientists learned to grow penicillium mold in the fermentation tanks by adding a kind of sugar and other ingredients. Okay? So, that is how penicillin was discovered and created. Okay? Today, penicillin is synthesized in a laboratory using penicillium mold, which is naturally producing of penicillin substance. Okay? Now, let's talk about pilocarpine. Okay? It is an aid for dry mouth. In 1994, an oral formulation of pilocarpine was used and approved for the treatment of dry mouth or serostomia. In 1998, another drug was approved to manage an autoimmune diseases that damages the salivary and lacrimal glands called Sjogren syndrome. In 2004, the drug quinine was isolated from the bark of Cinchona Susirubra Pav, ex cloche and was approved to treat malaria. At present, more and more developments are being introduced in the pharmaceutical industry to produce new drugs for the treatment of diseases. As you see, medical studies will never cease. It will continue until the end of time. Bacterial and viral mutations happens every now and then so studies and discoveries of medicinal ailments and discoveries of new medicines will continue until the end of time okay so now let's move on to food food is our basic need okay food is a basic need for human survival it is true during the Stone Age, humans relied only on hunting and foraging to get food. They depend on what the ecosystem could really provide them. As the Earth's population grew, the demand for food increased. Crops that can be grown were discovered and cultivated, and animals were domesticated. Throughout history, agriculture and cultivation evolved from picking desirable crops and breeding animals to maintain stable supply of food for the last to maintaining stable supply of food to last for a long periods of time as preparation for the changing season and the possibility of natural disasters. Ways to cultivate other species of crops and animals suitable for consumption also evolved throughout time. The increasing demand for food as the world population grew also resulted for the development of more lands for agriculture. So you see, advancement in agricultural technology can make agriculture more efficient and help reduce poverty levels around the world. More agricultural productivity means greater income for farmers that lowers food prices and increased food supplies. And of course, more job opportunities in rural and urban areas. Okay? The most important aspect of agriculture or the use of food as a basic need for human survival is that agriculture is the source of the world's food supply. No matter where you at or what you are eating, the ingredients in your meals came from somewhere. And that all roads lead to agriculture. Okay? So, Let's talk about agriculture and fisheries as a source of food. Farmers and 
fishermen rely on healthy ecosystems for their livelihood. The benefits of biodiversity is necessary for the growth of many important crops. About 39 of the leading 57 global crops need birds and insects as pollinators. Agrobiodiversity is the result of careful selection and innovative development by farmers, fisheries, and herders throughout the years. Harvested crops, varieties, and non-harvested species in the environment that support ecosystem for food production fall under agrobiodiversity. So, agriculture provides benefits on our basic level, okay, or our basic needs and economic level. And of course, you can see uh, a country as a developed one if they are rich in agricultural industries, okay? It helps every country in the world in one way or another and provides countless benefits and luxuries that people are lucky to have access to. Okay, now let's move on to energy for human consumption. So, energy from various sources wherein humans rely on energy provided by ecosystem to do necessary activities in order to survive. In the Stone Age, heat energy from fire was used mainly for survival against harsh, cold environments, for cooking, and for communication with nearby tribes in the form of smoke. Okay, so even in the... Ancient times where in the Stone Age discovered heat energy through fire, they have been using it throughout to use in communication and in production of food or in cooking their foods. So fire and water can be the source of energy. In 1000 BC, coal is a source of energy that was used by people in northeastern China for heating and cooking. It eventually became popular in other civilizations, such as the Romans and Northern Native Americans. In 400 BC, water energy or hydropower was used by the ancient Greeks and Romans and for irrigation. In 347 AD, or after death of Christ, the earliest known oil wells were developed in China. Okay, So energy... They made use of extensive bamboo pipelines with depths of 800 feet for lighting and heating. In 500 to 900 AD, the Persians started to use wind-powered grain mills and water pumps. By 1300 AD, windmills taking the modern pinwheel shape were developed in Western Europe. And 1390, the Dutch built larger windmills for draining lakes and marshes in the Rhine River. Delta. So, energy, there are various ways of generating it. One is wind energy, which was used to navigate through bodies of water. During 1700s to 1800s, at the time of the Industrial Revolution, biomass as a primary source of energy was replaced with coal, and the British discovered that by burning, coal is transformed into hot burning coke, a fuel with a high carbon content and few impurities. With this, the use of coal became widespread all over the world. So, these are the times na uh, talamak na yung pag mining ng coal. So, now, because of that discovery, we now have our petroleum products as a source of energy. In 1820, natural gas was used as a source of light, although the lack of pipeline infrastructure made its distribution challenging. In 1830s, the electric generator was developed based on Michael Faraday's discovery of electromagnetism. In 1850s, commercial oil was drilled which led to the distillation of kerosene from petroleum. In 1860s, Augustine Moshot developed the first solar-powered system for industrial machinery. Now, in 1892, geothermal energy was first used. In 1942, the first nuclear fission reactor was designed and built. In the 19th century and 20th century, the utilization of coal energy shaped the industrialization of the United States, United Kingdom, and other European countries. So, this is the history of uh, use of our petroleum products. Now, let's talk about the use of energy and their downfalls. 
from the development of the use of energy sources throughout the history it can be seen that there was no direct or indirect exhaustion of biodiversity in the utilization of energy resources however as early as 1973 the effects on the environment and the risk of potential accidents when using energy alarmed many environmental organizations. Because in 1979, a nuclear reactor accident at Three Mile Island near Middletown, Pennsylvania happened. At the end of 1980, the biggest oil spill in the U.S. waters, the Exxon Valdez oil spill in Alaska, occurred. In the 2000s, number of catastrophic events Transpired. Example is the Fukushima nuclear crisis in Japan. Okay. So, as you can see, um, so as you can see, along with the advancement of our nuclear energy or the discoveries of our nuclear energy, there comes this downfalls wherein accidents happen. Okay. So, this is what I was telling you na in every advancement, there is a downfall okay so from the development and the use of energy as you can see these accidents happen okay so a study conducted by jones petchar and kizaker in 2015 reported that repercussions of society's demand for clean and abundant energy on biodiversity and human well-being the demands for energy created a positive impact on unconventional ways of producing energy not, in turn, have resulted in adverse effects on biodiversity in terms of wildlife, mortality, habitat loss, fragmentation, noise, and light pollution, invasive species, and changes in carbon stock and water resources. So, energy has become a contentious and politicized topic, spurring activism, whether it be fossil fuel divestment, campaign, keystone pipeline protests, or concern over wind turbine harm to birds. But whatever energy future we choose, two things are clear. An expanding human population will need more energy. Okay, of course, as we expand in population, more and more people needed energy. And no matter what energy source we pick, it will have landscape scale impacts on biodiversity and ecosystem services. Of course, in a recent extensive literature written by Jones Petchar and Kaiserker, okay, they looked at the impacts of what they call energy sprawl on natural landscapes the study presented in the journal bioscience wherein they analyzed 276 published peer-reviewed articles that looked at the landscape effects of oil natural gas and wind production infrastructure worldwide in order to compare their impacts on biodiversity and ecosystem services wildlife mortality habitat loss and fragmentation, noise and light pollution, and invasive species as well, okay? And changes in carbon stocks and freshwater resources, okay? So, they studied the impact of our overgrowing population on the biodiversity of our surroundings, okay? Imagine in our growing population and each of us utilizes plastics, every day diba and imagine in each of the family households that we have we have disposed a lot a huge amount of plastics so that is the one thing that changes the biodiversity of our surroundings okay plastics are not naturally there okay we created that as human beings and we disposed it harshly on our surroundings okay imagine how much plastics do we dispose and where are those plastics disposed to imagine that so energy consumption grew as population grows okay now let's talk about water storage and flood control 
on our reverse, water is one of our basic human needs. The earliest recorded civilizations were situated near rivers or lakes which made their livelihoods dependent on the water. With increasing demand for portable and drinkable water, along with the discovery of groundwater 2,000 years ago, wells began to be used in Middle East. Water for rivers and lakes was also used for irrigation. To cope with the adverse effects of the changing tides, floodways were utilized to prevent farm flooding in nearby communities that usually result in damaged crops. Aqueducts were invented and built by the Romans and the Greeks to maintain stable water supplies to communities that were far from bodies of water. Then, in the 19th century, with the increasing demand of potable water and irrigation of crops, dams were built to maintain water supply in communities. So, noon, during the ancient civilization that we have, okay, people live nearby waters. Communities that were built during those times are nearby water. Siyempre, lalayo ka pa ba? Andiyan na yung kailangan mo. So, when there is water, there is a community during those times. Tapos, they discovered the underground water. Kaya tayo nagkaroon ng well. Okay? Ngayon, after well, anong meron? Poso. ba? Now, after that, water systems were created. Okay, now, let's go to the forestry. Biodiversity in forests plays an unquestionably crucial role in water resources. Forests provide natural filtration and storage systems to provide fresh water. The roots and leaves of trees create conditions that promote the infiltration of rainwater into the soil to fill up the aquifer systems with groundwater, while percolation occurs allowing the movement of surface water into rivers and lakes. Forests also play a major role in water recycle by affecting rates of transpiration and evaporation and water storage in watersheds. There seems to be a synchrony between indigenous forest and biodiversity so that, in various ways, they contribute and regulate the quantity and quality of fresh water. So, flooding is mostly known for its adverse effects, but it also has benefits. In the context of agriculture, flooding can help farmers for it distributes nutrients that particular patches of soil lacked. This can make the soil healthier and more fertile for the cultivation of crops. Further, floods can also add nutrients to rivers and lakes, thus improving the ecosystem. However, these benefits are not always achieved because most of the time, flooding causes long-term damages. It is also observed that recent floodings caused by typhoon have been extremely damaging, which may be one of the effects of climate change. In the Philippines, for instance, flooding caused extreme damage in both urban and rural areas. In urban areas, floods damage homes roads, and other infrastructures because of the lack of proper drainage systems and waste management system. In rural areas, on the other hand, floods easily destroy crops and farmlands and may even be deadly, especially for low-lying areas near rivers and lakes. So, as you can see, the forest plays a lot of roles in holding what excess water from the ground. So, as we can see kasi, our forests are not that healthy na. And as I said, illegal loggers existed way long ago without replenishing the trees that they have gathered. So, floods became harsh. That is, we have read, floods is not that harsh but it is beneficial, lalo na sa farmers, because of the distribution of nutrients. Pero kasi nowadays, flood is not that um, subtle, okay? Floods nowadays are so huge 
that it even wiped out an entire community. For example, is the Yolanda, di ba? Almost wiped out ang komunidad ng ng Panay in Iloilo, remember? Di ba? That happened way back year 2013 in November. And that is very, very sad na nakita nyo na yung effect of the changes in our biodiversity. Okay? And the flash floods, hindi lang yan sa atin nangyayari. That also happened in Japan. Not, not just in Japan, but in Hawaii and a lot of places in the entire world. Okay? So now, air and water treatment. Air balanced by biodiversity. Some of the gases considered as criteria pollutants like nitrogen oxide and O3, which is ozone, a highly reactive gas composed of three oxygen atoms, okay, in moderate amounts contribute to a healthy ecosystem and balance the biodiversity. However, due to excessive concentrations of these gases, the capacity of the environment to clean itself and be resilient is diminished. Why? Because nitrogen dioxide and ozone is highly reactive gases and they are normally there. But now, because of our pollutants and the increase of demand of energy, there has been an increased release of nitrogen dioxide and ozone on our atmosphere. So, excessive nitrogen stimulates the growth of nitrogen-loving plant species but reduces the occurrence of plant species adapted to low nitrogen environment. Nitrogen reduces the resilience of forests to other environmental stresses such as drought, frosts, pests, and diseases. The concentration limit of nitrate in drinking water is too high to protect natural ecosystems, particularly the plant species. Widespread exceedance of nitrogen critical concentrations will adversely affect the structure and functions of ecosystem. The effect of excessive nitrogen in the environment may not be felt at once. It may take decades, but this will definitely weaken the resilience of soil and plants. From 1990 to 2006, there was an extensive vegetation damage around the world due to ozone. Ozone can be good or bad, depending on where it is found, the Earth's upper atmosphere or at ground level. Ozone found in the ground level is known as the bad ozone. It is created by chemical reactions between oxides of nitrogen and volatile organic compounds under the presence of sunlight. High levels of ground-level ozone promote early flowering, affecting the synchronization of pollinators and flowers. Ground-level ozone also damages the leaves of salad crops, consequently reducing their market value. In 2000, ozone pollution reduced with yield by 14%, and the tomato yield by 9%, which created a domino effect in overall production and consumption of goods. So, imagine yung dalawang molecular atoms na yan of gas that exist normally in our atmosphere, they can create a domino effect, okay? For, do for just changing the amount of that gases that is present in our surroundings, a lot of of ecosystems were affected. Diba? So, we don't deal on just one place or on just one sect, but the entire ecosystems that existed in our community. Broadly speaking, the diversity of an ecosystem is dependent on the physical characteristic of the environment. Imagine the environment is damaged, and wherein the diversity of an ecosystem is relying to and the damage na rin yung ecosystem, di ba? And the interactions of the species that have with each other and with the environment was also affected. Negative impacts on vegetation reduce the sink capacity for carbon dioxide and ozone. 
enhancing their atmospheric concentrations and affecting the global water cycle. The effects of global warming are harmful to the environment and its inhabitants. Inhabitants, soils, store air pollutants temporarily that affect water purification. Stored pollutants have adverse effects on soil functioning and create problems when the retention capacity of soil is reached or disturbed. Worldwide efforts are being made to decrease nitrogen deposition to the biosphere to enhance plant species diversity and the relative species richness in grasslands. One of that is organic farming. One solution farmers have thought to help us restore the biodiversity we have is organic farming. Okay? In organic farming kasi, you prevent excess um, excretion of nitrogen-based products. Kasi sa mga, normally, sa mga farmland, ang ginagamit nating um, insecticides is nitrogen, nit nitrogenous, nitrogen-rich products. Not only nitrogen, but also ammonia and a lot of harmful substances that when released into the surroundings will harm our ozone layer. Okay? Not only the ozone layer, but the gas concentrations in our air. Okay? So, there are protocols in biodiversity. Convention of Biological Diversity is included in implementation of regulations. Okay? There is a need to enhance the implementation of regulation. Worldwide protocols such as the Montreal Protocol and Kyoto Protocol. The Cartagena Protocol among 10 Pacific countries, namely Fiji, Kiribati, the Marshall Islands, Nauru, Niue, Palau, Papua New Guinea, Samoa, the Solomon Islands, and Tonga aims to ensure the safe transport, handling, and use of living modified organisms resulting from modern biotechnology that may have adverse effects on biodiversity. It was adopted in January 29, 2000 and was enforced in September 11, 2003. It is linked to the Convention of Biological Diversity, which helps to protect Pacific communities and biodiversity from the consequences of living modified organisms. It requires having facilities in place through proper legislative frameworks, laboratory facilities, technology, and technical capabilities to enable countries to detect, measure, and monitor LMOs that come into the country. So there has been a lot of organizations that we are uh, we have to implement regulations in saving our biological diversity. Okay? There has been environmental laws wherein local it is locally strict implementations of environmental laws among industries and communities alike must be ensured to prevent further damage of biodiversity from air pollution and water pollution. There should also be efforts to ensure that whatever treatment is employed, it should not promote mass pollution transfer from one matrix of the environment to another. Okay? I hope everybody will contribute in the saving of our biological diversity. Because, sabi nga natin, it is very boastful for us humans to think that we can save the earth. Because the earth has been saving us from the very start. Pero lahat ng bagay na nandiyan at pinababayan ay nauubos. Okay? So, let us contribute in the saving of our mother earth. Okay? Simply recycling or minimizing na lang the use of plastics if you can. Yun lang. Malaking tulong na yun. Imagine kung ilang tao ang gagawa nun, ilang tons of plastic waste would be reduced, di ba? So, simply using 
recyclable cups or magbaaw na lang kayo ng baunan nyo when eating outside to reduce the use of plastics. Malaking bagay na yun. Okay? So, that is the end of our discussion. I hope you have learned something. Okay? Thank you so much and have a good day. Okay? Let's save Mother Earth. Bye!